In 2008, my father passed away. Later on that day, I called my husband and I told him that my father had passed. His exact words was, oh, wow. Hey, let me call you back. Man passed away. I gave her my condolences and that's all I can do. She was in St. Louis. I can't do anything about it. Edmonda and David started dating in their 20s but wound up marrying other people. When those marriages ran their courses, love brought them back together. But now, after seven years of marriage, they say the love is gone and won't be coming back. I had a daughter I lost in 2011 to a car accident. I'm so sorry. My husband called his daughter and our niece over so that they can be there. He couldn't even tell me. And he wasn't compassionate and it really made me grief stricken. I'm starting waking up five, six, seven o'clock in the morning and no one's in bed with me. Should be able to see me. Evelina and David's on and off love affair of more than 30 years won't be on ever again. You say, Mrs. Scholes, that your husband would hold sex as punishment. Oh, yeah, he moved out of the bedroom, oh, nine yards. Today, on Divorce Court. Come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Ebonetta Scholes and David Brown. The two of you have been married for seven years, although you've dated on and off for 30 years before you got married. You do not, however, want to be married anymore. And Mrs. Scholes, you have some issues that you would like me to resolve for you economically. But before we do that, I am going to start with you, Mrs. Scholes. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today? Good morning, Judge. Well, my husband thinks that I'm a doormat. And he likes to walk all over me, and I just want him gone. I need him to leave. I just, I'm done. Tell me what he does that makes you feel like a doormat. For instance, one of my grandchildren had an accident. Mm -hmm. and, and so I informed my husband that I was going to the hospital, that I wouldn't be going to work. And he told me, well, what can you do? Who does that? Who says that? What do you mean, what can I do? I'm his grandmother. And so I felt like he was, that was very rude, inconsiderate. And um, another thing, Your Honor, my husband doesn't like to give me money. He likes to buy things for me. I like to have my own money. He, he doesn't um, appreciate me. He doesn't appreciate the things that I do. I do because I love him. He does not say thank you, I love you. He doesn't honor me like I feel like I should be honored. And, and today, I'm here to just cut all ties. Mr. Brown, would you like to respond to I what sure she would. said? I sure would. Um, the reason I said that, she's not a doctor. What, what is she going to do? She's going to go down I'm there and sit with him. Of course, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But then they want to drag it on. You know, let her mom take him home and take care of him. You have to go to work every day. Going to work is not a priority. It is a favor to my husband. That's his that job. That same job pays pa pa our pa bills. Pardon me. You do not believe that it is your job to contribute financially to the family? No, I didn't say that. I said this job that he's talking about uh -huh. is his job. I do. I help him. It's oh, I see what you're saying. I see what yeah. you're saying. There, so I you assist him in getting his job done. Correct. He gets paid it's and brings home. Job. Ms. Mrs. Scholes, I understand you wanting to be present at the hospital with the, ba with, with the grandbaby. I get that. Did you want to continue to care for him when his mother was there, when you did have business obligations to care for? Okay. Uh, yes, that's just what she wanted. I, I'm, uh, I'm Honor, asking her. Your Honor, I don't have a <laughs> business obligation. I had a moral obligation to my husband to try to help him with his job because I know that he has total nerve replacement. That is not my job. When that, man, when that man hired him, he said, David Brown, you have the job. He didn't say Ebonetta and David. Mm -hmm. I assist him to, because I choose to. And you see, okay, and, and he, he fails to understand that. They didn't hire me. They hired him. I get it. I get no, it. No, they hired us. We went there together. Uh, and he, they, they put in one name instead of paying taxes on two different names, two different people working on the same job. You know what, Mr. Scholes, I'll tell you what, my husband got a job that has nothing to do with me, and he gets hired and he needs help. I'm there, because that's my gig. Okay. I signed up for it. I said I do. I'm, a, I'm with you. I'm in your corner. I do obligate you to, be, to have your man's back. That's what it does. Okay, Your Honor, <laughs> uh, let me explain something to you. I have my husband's back. When he had his total knee replacement, I went to school full-time. I did my job driving a bus full-time, and 
guy did his job, his route, full time until he got better. When he added six, seventh, and five, six, and seven lumbar corrected, I did all three of those jobs to help with our financial stability. So what you're saying is, in this particular instance, he needed to handle his business on his own while you were assisting your family. Exactly. We've been talking about you, Mr. B Mr. Brown. What is your primary concern with Ms. Scholl? Just that. She does those things. She, she just doesn't give me any heads up when she's about to do something. She'll bring the kids home, uh, relatives home. She'll get on the phone sometimes and talk all day long to people. But when I ask her something, it's two words, and she starts screaming at me. It it's shows how he's not home all day. He works all day. Okay. He's not home all day. So what are you talking about? And when I come home, okay, what Joel, do I get? Let, let me ask you a question. He leaves <laughs> no, home. No, hang on, hang on, hang on, because there's something I don't understand. You walked out of here and said, I'm a doormat, and I'm tired of getting walked on. And so far in here, you looking like everything but a doormat. Thank you. Okay, but no, <laughs> let me explain. Let Thank me, you. Let me explain. When divorce court continues, is Eminetta partying too hard for her husband's liking? Do you stay out to 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning? Stay out. together he has two I have four his grandchildren came stayed all summer he didn't ask me they came and there was no problem I had no problem with that I love them he did not say is it okay if if the grandkids come he didn't say that gotcha. when I, he, I didn't tell you a you couple said weeks they'll before. be here no you didn't you said they'll be here Day. How many times have they been down in a year? It doesn't matter. Oh, See, it does now, matter. Now, Mr. Mr. Brown, now wait a minute. I just gave her the big you must consult speech. Right. And now. Right. And I did just did, that. Did you fail to consult before no, you I brought didn't. people I in the to her home? I a couple of weeks before, and my grandkids hadn't been down that for two years. True. And did you say anything? The only time we see them is Christmas or the summer. Did you say, is it cool? Do you have a problem? Is it convenient? No, I did just the way she did to me. I said, look, my grandkids want to come down for the summer. I, I've got that, so I want to move on to something else. Okay. You you say that there were two significant events in your life, two yes. deaths yes. that you felt his response demonstrated a lack of care. In 2008, my father passed away. The hospital called me and told me that I need to get there to sign whatever I need to sign. He was he was uh, low sick, so I flew to St. Louis. My father passed away that morning at 6:30. So we did we we had to do. Later on that day, I called my husband, and I told him that my father had passed. His exact words was, oh, wow. Hey, let me call you back. In the background, I hear the dominoes hitting the table. <laughs> Mr. Brown, did you respond, oh, wow, let yeah, me call I you back? Yeah, I responded, and I didn't respond like that, ma'am. Well, were you the man, The man passed away. I gave time? her my con condolences, and that's all I can do. She was in St. Louis. Yeah, but, but, but it's, your, it's her father. It's a whole I know it's long, her father. It, but it's a whole long conversation. Are you okay? What, you know, do you need any yeah. help with the arrangements? Right. How's everybody? Who's there? Uh, you know, how you feeling? Yeah. What, 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 you know? I went through that. I asked her how she's feeling. I, I asked her about the people there. But it still doesn't change the fact that I can't do anything about it. All I can do is give her my condolences. And she I'll, was so you know, far Mr. away. M Mr. Brown, I, I hear what you're saying. But I understand what she's saying, and it, 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 it seems matter of fact. It seems matter of fact that I'm not there, so there's only so much I can do. There's a lot you can do over the phone. Women just want to be heard. Hear my pain. Yeah. Y yes. You didn't fill that role. I think, that is, am, I, am I right? And not only did he not fill it, <laughs> the bottom line, okay, my daughter, I had a daughter I lost in 2011 to a car accident. I'm so sorry. So my husband called his daughter and our niece over 
so that they can be there. He couldn't even tell me because I wasn't there when the sheriff came. I was over to my other daughter's house. So and and he wasn't compassionate and it, and and it really made me grief stricken. Mr. Brown, why don't you respond to that and then we go we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, um that did happen. She lost her daughter. And 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 it was bad. I called my daughter because I just didn't know how to present it to her. I'd never been in that position before. When the sheriff came, he he knocked, he caught me off guard. I called my daughter cuz they're really good friends. Just to help me bring it, you know, uh, projected to her. I needed help. I needed support. So I called my daughter to help support me to support her. Right. Do, I, do you believe that's what he was doing? Judge Lynn? Yes, I do. But but and, and after 30 years, what there is nothing that we should not be able to talk about. We don't talk or, about or, anything. So how can uh, we no, have something to talk it, about? I got it. Oh, no. I, I got it. Hang on. I, I, I think we've, 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 we've covered that territory about it, everything enough. I understand that. Yeah. I'm going to ask Mr. Brown a question about your finances. I understand that they, they are a point of contention in your marriage, and what is it about the finances that is causing you two so much difficulty? I, I just feel like my, my, my wife doesn't handle money. When we first got together, she told me she didn't handle money well. Mm -hmm. So What does she do? She spends it. She just likes to spend it. She can't keep it. She can't hold it. It burns her pockets, you know? I don't know what it does, but she can't keep it in there. She'll, she'll go to the store and buy Twenty dollars with the lottery tickets. Come back home. She'll, she'll. If that's not enough, she'll go to the casino. If that's not enough, she'll go to the senior citizens. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> they play for dimes and nickels. Wait, and no. Are you going to senior citizens? Yes, can't I get enough, but you know what? Yes, I do. But you know what? And then when she gets mad at me, she push that person arm and swing that little arm. <laughs> when divorce court returns, Evanetta complains that David lacks compassion. Ago. Do you believe David needs to be more compassionate? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. They'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court is back with the case of Evanetta Scholes, who has a lot of complaints with her husband David Brown, but is her biggest complaint that he's coming up a little light in the love department. Oh yeah, he moved out the bedroom, no nine yards. I'm going to ask one last question and then we're going to wrap okay. this thing up. But before we do, can no, I what? tell you something? She just said no, no but... No. no, 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 wait a minute, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Doormat. That's what she came out here and said to me. Doormat. Yeah. That's just deep. No, he, go ahead. He's go ahead. Over me. Go you ahead. just don't understand because I, 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 don't, I keep the peace. I try not to say nothing until I blow up, but that's the wrong thing to do. But the bottom line you go was. Go the first thing in the morning. Let's move on to another topic. You say, Mrs. Scholes, that your husband withholds sex as punishment. Oh, yeah, he moved out the bedroom the whole nine yards. I sure did. He moved How long ago did he move out of the bedroom? Co uh, a couple months ago. He's back. Was there a conversation that, that accompanied that? Uh, yeah, he said, oh, you're, you're barely beginning to get on my nerves, and I'm moving into this room. And I don't told her I was tired of sleeping alone. I was tired of waking up 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, and no one's in bed with me. He'd be at the casino. Wait, I'm you think married. she's at I'm the casino? I'm supposed to have a wife next to me. Do you stay out to 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning? I stay out. I don't, I don't Tell come. Tell the truth. Yes, but because. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. But because. I don't get off work till 1.30. When what I make it to the casino, hang on, hang on. If I, if I want to go to casino, I don't make it there till 2.15. What is 4 o'clock? That's hour and a half. Take that long, even find a good machine. Judge, I asked her, just call me. Let me know she's going. Mm -hmm. That's all I ask. Just call me and tell me you're going to the casino so I don't be waiting up expecting something. Let's just move on to the arbitration. Why, why don't you tell me uh, why you are seeking $150 from Mr. Brown? <laughs> because... Actually, uh, you know, it should be a lot more than that, but the $150 for a bike, um, when the grandchildren came, I asked her what she wanted, and she told me clothes, boots, and, you know, a little girly thing. So we went shopping, and then in the process, I picked up a bike for another grandchild, 
And then when she seen right. the bike, she really wanted the bike. So my husband said, well, let me give her the bike and then we'll get another bike and give it to the other grandchild. Mm -hmm. He never mentioned it since. And I feel like, you know, he should have been. He should, he, he should make good on his promise. Right. And did you do that? No. Why not? I had slipped my mind. When divorce court continues, why was Judge Lynn singing a song of praise for Evanetta and David? The fact that that's where your heart is gives me pleasure. It gives me joy. It makes me want to say kudos to the both of you. And I... I after a 30-year on-and-off relationship and a seven-year marriage. Let me say this to you, too. Why I love you both. Seriously. You seem so dedicated and involved and concerned and positive with your families. It is, is, it is heartening. It is... I didn't get a story in here about you running around over there and you trying to have sex with somebody else. I got stories about competing needs for family. And even though you haven't worked it out, the fact that that's where your heart is gives me pleasure. It gives me joy. It makes me want to say kudos to the both of you. And I, 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 I believe that multi-generational support for children is absolutely necessary. I honor and respect you both. And I think you two need to honor and respect each other for that which you do for those that are coming behind you. Mr. Brown is a dude. Now, as a dude, there's some things he doesn't do well. <laughs> now, not, he doesn't do fuzzy well. He doesn't do touchy-feely well. They're just not good at it. In general, so you got to give him a little room. The fact that he called his daughter over to help him help you shows he knew, knew he wasn't good at it, and he, he, was, he was startled, he was struck. He knew you were going to be struck. He wanted somebody who had that capacity to assist you. And I think that was the best that he could do. He probably isn't as warm and fuzzy as you would like him to be. Sometimes you have to say things that you're uncomfortable saying. Sometimes you have to just say, I mean, this is... A universally good thing to say to a woman, baby, tell me how you feel. Then you sit back and you just let it happen to you. <laughs> you just, just let it, let it, let it, let it, let, let it flow. Let it flow. I got a book called Making Marriage Work. It's right here. And I got a book, it's a whole chapter that says rules for men. And it tells you, it gives you little starter phrases so you can actually have a conversation. Yeah. And I'm going to give that to you well, I sure would to like help to you out. Right. I, I, I appreciate it. Mrs. Scholes. Thank you. I don't know <laughs> where you got that doormat <laughs> metaphor. Uh, you need to go back and, and, and take a look in the mirror and and because you more missile-like than doormat-like. <laughs> <laughs> You're strong, you're tough, you know what you want, you get what you want. Maybe you might want to dial it back just a little bit and, and understand him for who he is. I think he's a good dude. He I is. think you're a good woman. I think you have a few communication issues that, mm -hmm. that that book will help you resolve, but you need to go on home and take this good brother home and take care of your good families and That's stay right. together. That's what you need to do. You really, really, really do. If you stay together, you love one another, you take care of your families. This matter's adjourned. There will be no recovery. Thank you. All right. Parties may leave the court.